The batteries of the future are actually already here. And Elon Musk just said what they are. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the Electric Viking. Fantastic to see you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. And thanks for those of you who have jumped on our Patreon account and contributed to the support of the movement of electric cars, renewable energy, and having a sustainable future. So recently, somebody tweeted Elon and said, which car should I buy? Model 3, the lithium iron phosphate version, or the NCA version? Elon said, get the lithium iron phosphate version. Then later he said, that is the battery chemistry of the future. Iron is abundant, and with lithium iron phosphate batteries, well, guess what? The prices are continually coming down. BYD said that their cost per kilowatt hour is 93 US dollars. Now, the magical mark upon which EVs should hit price parity with ICE vehicles is 100 US dollars. Well, interestingly, that same year, BYD has been selling electric cars at an incredible rate, an increase of 300% versus last year. And their EVs are about the same price as their ICE vehicles. You'll find in China, you can buy an EV for the same price as an ICE vehicle. It's very common across models, across everywhere. It's not an isolated activity. It's happening everywhere. Remember, there are numerous models of EV you can buy in China that cost for, from between $4,000 US dollars all the way up to however much you want to spend. But the most popular EV in China, well, not always, but often the most popular EV, and if it's not in first place, it's in either second or third place, is the Hongwan Mini EV, Wuling Hongwan Mini EV, which is jointly built by Wuling, SAIC, and GM. And that sells for between 4,000 to 6,000 US dollars. So you can see, right, that the cost of batteries has come down, therefore EVs have become cheaper. And there's been a war between different battery chemistries. So I've been predicting on numerous videos that LFP would be the battery chemistry of the future. That the chemistry we needed was here all along, but because of its shorter or its of having less dense energy or being or its competitors having more energy dense batteries, people have overlooked it. While BYD and other companies have started to make it become popular again, but probably General Motors, LG Chem and Hyundai have done the most for LFP. There's been lots of fires in their cars lately. They've had to recall their vehicles. So this debacle has led to many people th saying, well, BYD's lithium ion phosphate batteries are clearly safe. We're not seeing any fires in lithium ion phosphate battery cars. So that's a good battery chemistry. In addition to that, the price is coming down. Plus, to make lithium ion phosphate batteries, you either need lithium ion phosphate, all fairly abundant materials. Now, obviously, the price of lithium has gone up significantly in the past few months, but of course you need lithium for all available battery chemistries on the market right now. So when it comes to electric cars, the battery technology of the future is the battery technology of now, and that is lithium iron phosphate batteries. Now in China, LFP battery installations have continued to extend their lead over ternary batteries. And this is a growing trend. I'll give you the numbers in a second. They're actually quite interesting. So what this means, lithium iron phosphate batteries are becoming the dominant choice for Chinese EV companies, at least for now. And well, when you see the numbers, you'll see that this is the future. Now, data released just last week by the China Automotive Battery Innovation Alliance shows that the installed base of LFP batteries has continued to lead in the past two months after surpassing ternary batteries for the first time this year in July. According to the data, China's power battery installed base in September was 15.7 gigawatt hours, up 138.6% year on year and up 25% from the previous month of August. But here's the most interesting part. Among them, ternary batteries installed a total of 6.1 gigawatt hours, up 45.6% year on year, and up only 15% from August. Compare this, though, to LFP. The installed volume of LFP, or lithium-ion phosphate, batteries grew more, 
with 9.5 gigawatt hours installed in September, up 309% year on year and 32% from the previous month. So you can see there is a very strong growing trend toward LFP. Now, assess this data in light of LG Chem's recent admission that they are now pivoting towards lithium ion phosphate batteries because, well, we all know why, don't we? Now keep in mind, the two largest electric battery manufacturing companies in China, number one, CATL, and number four, BYD, both specialize in lithium ion phosphate batteries. And both of them are growing at an incredibly rapid rate. Now, CATL is obviously the clear leader in electric car batteries. They haven't had to do any big recalls like LG Chem have. And a lot of companies are moving away from LG Chem who were their close competitor, were very, very close competitor to CATL until recently when companies like Volkswagen, GM, and Hyundai decided, yeah, nah, we don't want any more of those ternary batteries from you guys. We're going to move to something better or something less risky anyway. Now, from January to September, China's power battery installation volume was 92 gigawatt hours, up 170% year on year, with ternary batteries still occupying the majority of the share. But as you can see by the trends, that is changing. Now, from January to September, the installed base of ternary batteries was 47.1 gigawatt hours, up 99.5% year on year accounting for 51% of the total installed base. Lithium-ion phosphate batteries installed volume was 44.8 gigawatt hours, up 332% year on year with a 48.7% share. So here you can see the clear trend, an increase of 332% versus ternary batteries with an increase of 99.5%. That's over the course of the entire year. Now in September, a total of 39 power cell companies in China saw their products installed 11 fewer than in the same month last year. CATL remains the largest power cell battery manufacturing company in China and in the world with 8.87 gigawatt hours installed in September and 56.5% market share, up 4.8 percentage points from 51.7% in August. These numbers are just for China, by the way, not for the world. So if you're looking at CATL's installed base for the entire planet, it's much larger than that. BYD, though, came in second behind CATL in China with 2.8 gigawatt hours installed in September and a market share of 18%. Now, I've been banging on over and over telling you it's time. Do it now. Do it before it's too late. Invest in BYD. It's the only sensible thing to do. Tesla, BYD, and if you like, Xpeng as well. Now, those are the three companies that I am most bullish on over the next decade. And if you want to know why, well, I've made lots of videos about it. I'll put some of them in the description below and check them out. Remember, this is a period in history where a huge amount of money is going from here to here. You might as well take some of it. Now, thank you for supporting the channel. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for being awesome. Have a great day and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.